So Xtool sent me an email and asked me if I'd be interested in taking a look at their Xtool D1 Pro 20 watt laser engraver with the Air Assist and the RA2 Pro rotary chuck. And I said, why, yes, yes, I would actually, that would be lovely. Um, I've had a handful of lasers in the shop. This is the first 20 watt that I've had to look at. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this job set up. This is a cork mouse pad that came with the material package. Um, I'm going to get this set up and let that run. And while that's doing that, I'll talk to you guys a little bit more about some of the nice features about the X tool. And then we're going to just look at a bunch of things that we can do with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is when I work with other lasers, uh, I work in absolute coordinates. The X tool is a little bit different as far as the layout goes. Um, its home position is in the far back corner, the far left corner. Most of them are the far or the front left corner. So you're basically working in a, in a negative grid space if you're using absolute coordinates. And I haven't been able to sort it out in Lightburn. I know that it can be done, but it's just been easier for me to do this because most of what I do is from the center because I do a lot of turning and you know bowls and stuff. I usually work from the center. That's how I'm used to doing it. There is um, some crosshairs that come out of the laser to help you line up your project with the top left corner, which is great if you have something that's square, but frequently I don't. So what I do is I mark the center of the material that I'm working on. And then I make sure I have my safety glasses on because I had to take the laser guard off to use the rotary. And I click the fire button on laser burn, which is a real low power. And then I manipulate that to the center. And then you shut the fire power off, right? So that is where I'm going to start this job and I'm going to frame it. Make sure it's going to go where I think it's going to go. Hope that the cable doesn't get hung up on anything. Okay. Now I'm going to close the enclosure um, and turn all of my lights and my fan on, which are all on the same power strip. And so what I have is I've got a fan in the front of the enclosure and a fan in the back of the enclosure and an inline fan in a duct going outside. So that sucks all the smoke and the fumes and everything out of there. A few of the technical high points of this machine are the 20 watt output. So you can cut thicker materials in fewer passes. You can do some color engraving on stainless steel. Uh, there are limit switches in all directions. There's a special focus feature on the laser so that you can focus deeper to cut thicker materials. And the construction of the entire unit is really robust. And that goes for the rotary attachment as well. I'm really, really impressed with the RA2 Pro rotary attachment, and I'm gonna show you guys some more of that stuff here in a little while. My only complaint about the X-Tool is the cable management. I really feel like there needs to be a drag chain to keep things from getting hung up. All right, I'll have to do a little creative um, word blocking out, but you know, if you know, you know. But this is my Venn diagram of Roy Kent. So I like this. I don't actually like the font that I picked for it, but that's okay. One of the nice things about the X tool that is different than some of the other ones that I have looked at is they send a lens cover. They send um, a replacement, one of these lenses. So this covers your actual laser lens. All right. I am going to show you guys how some of the chuck, I'm sorry, how some of the roller um, attachments work on the RA2 Pro. I've already done some things with the chuck. 
So this is going to be an interesting one to do because it's tapered. It's also not completely round because I turned it on the lathe and it was a little bit wet, so it moved some. But I don't think that's going to be a problem. Um, I have a mark right there. That's kind of where my center point's going to be, and I'm going to engrave a feather on here. So what I need to do, and I, I already ran a, a test on it just to see if I could get this lined up kind of right. So I'm using the little adjuster holder upper guy here, and that's going to sit there. Because what I need to do is this part where it's going to engrave needs to be as flat as I can get it. That's probably, you know, it's, it's hard because it's tapered all the way down. It's probably going to be fine. And it seems like it's being held okay here. So... Uh, I already set the height, and I've got that. This isn't exact where it's up and down, but this is about the highest point. Um, in light burn, I am going to hit the fire button and start this right about there. if it looks like it's going to go where I think I want it to. And it looks like it came back to center, so I think that's sufficient. This really is an awesome rotary unit. There are four different modes that you can use. I'm really only going to show you guys the chuck jaws and the rollers, but the, um, the little pins for the rings are great for shot glasses and all kinds of other things. Looks cool, though. Like that. Like I said, this was a little bit of a hard piece because of the, you know, varying diameters and stuff, but. This is a project from Xtools website. This is a, an Easter themed rolling pin and their file was set up for um, a beach rolling pin. This little test piece I have happens to be maple, but I think that it's gonna be close enough. And I processed this using Xtools Creative Space software just to see what the default settings were going to look like and how deep it was going to etch. You could also process this job with the roller setup of the rotary. Um, this little test piece that I have is, you know, just a little round that I turned on the lathe, so there aren't any handles that get in the way. But I have actually done this on rolling pins with the chuck setup. I just had to take the handle out and then, you know, I put it back in when I was finished. So this is a free file from Xtool using their free laser software. It's got a pretty good deep etch in there. I'll take it back to the house and wash it. Yeah, I bet that'll leave an imprint. So, okay, so that was 3,000 millimeters a minute at 50% power and um, three passes. This is a little candle holder type thing that I turned on the lathe. And I set this up also in the chuck on the rotary, and I'm really happy with how this came out. It hasn't been sanded yet, but I think it's going to be cool with some sanding and some finish. I also used the chuck setup to engrave the sizes of some of my Forstner bits, which have worn off, and that worked great. I was pretty excited about the possibility of doing engraving in color and stainless steel. Um, I know that it can be done. The graph on the right is what Xtool sent me for just, you know, kind of starting parameters for the, the 20 watt pro. Um, I did not have a ton of luck with it. I tried to do a similar grid on stainless steel and it hardly marked it. 
I had better luck using the stainless steel dog tags like these. I will tell you, I know that it can be done. There's a guy in one of the X-Tool Facebook groups who really has gotten it down to a science with a 10 watt. I mean, it, it is absolute color. So I know it can be done. I have just spent so much time messing around with this and I have got to get onto other things. So um, take my word for it. If you wanna do stainless steel things, you can do it, but you're gonna have to do some experimentation. So all in all, I'm really impressed with the X-Tool D1 Pro. The 20 watt version is great. I have not done a ton of experimenting with cutting thicker things, but I am gonna do that for the next part of the videos that I'm doing for Xtool, which is more about making money with it. Um, I have some ideas and I will show you guys what I've got lined up coming up here soon. Uh, but I can tell you that I am impressed with the build quality. The software that comes with it free is, is actually quite robust. They've integrated a lot of the same kinds of functionality that Lightburn has. So um, you really can just get an Xtool use the software that comes with it and do stuff right out of the box. Uh, personally, I prefer to use Lightburn. I bought it, I have it, and I think that it's really a great program, but um, you know, you don't have to do that. So uh, yeah, I, I got to give the X tool a, a big thumbs up. There are links below in the description box if you guys want to get your hands on one for yourselves. Until next time, y'all be safe out there and wear your safety glasses.